to invite up um, Pastor Nestor Soriano. He is, we are very blessed here at the Campion Church to have two pastors, um, Pastor Michael Getz and then our uh, associate pastor, um, Mr. Soriano. He just joined us this year, in the summer, August, yes. Um, and has been a major blessing on our campus working on uh, evangelism and also with our worship service and so we are blessed to have him. And he's just going to share a few words with us this morning to continue in our, our worship um, theme and thoughts this morning. So, Pastor Mr. First, and on my cue at the end, uh, we're going to say a hearty amen for these five groups. So the first group, I'd like to praise the Lord and thank the staff here at Camden Academy. Uh, you worked hard, many hours just to coordinate this event. And I praise the Lord for our staff. I praise the Lord for our church, Campion Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have many members here worshiping today. And I just love the blend and the collaboration that's happening between the school and the church. So I'd like to thank the church. And by the way, I was reminded by one of our leaders, elders, Nick Stenbach, and just to mention that next weekend here, we are going to hold a special Easter program on Sabbath afternoon and also on Sunday afternoon. It's called Journey to the Cross. And just a reminder, for those of you who would like to get involved, 9 o'clock on Monday, we're going to meet here to set up this gym for that program. And also on Wednesday at 7 p.m., I invite you, if you'd like to try on your costume and see what the program will look like, I invite you to come. So I'm thankful for the staff. I'm thankful for our church. I'm also thankful for Mr. and Mrs. Cluse. Are you thankful for them, students? I am thankful for them. I'm also thankful for all of our students. Hallelujah to all of our students. We would not have this program if it wasn't for you. So I praise the Lord for all of our students. And last but not least, I want to praise the Lord for those of you who are parents to these students. We would not have students if we didn't have parents. And I want to affirm you for your belief in Christian education. So on three, let's say amen to these five groups. One, two, three, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I went to North Shore Southern Junior Academy there in Chicago. And I remember when we had band fest and we had choir fest. Dr. Steven Zorf, some of you might know who he is. I know that Mrs. Pose knows who he is. He would direct our choir. And I remember staying in the dorm and singing at Music Fest, so I know exactly how you're feeling. Many hours of practice, are you tired of all the practicing? Not tired of it, but are you just exhausted from all the practicing? <laughs> I remember when I was tired, but you know what? The parents, parents, all of us are going to be blessed today. So Mrs. Cluze gave me my theme, and she said the theme this weekend is integrity. So I was thinking to myself, how can I blend the idea of integrity and music together. And the Lord gave me the best chapter where music and integrity is blended together, and it's in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, where you see music and integrity blended together. And this morning in my short teaching, I want to answer two questions. Number one, what is Christian integrity? And number two, what happens when we live with integrity? Let's pray. Oh Lord, what is integrity? And what happens when we live with Christian integrity? Please give us the answer. And please help us to see Jesus. In His name I pray, Amen. Remember the story, Daniel chapter 3. So this king, King Nebuchadnezzar, he builds this tall, enormous, golden image the Bible says it's 60 cubits by 6 cubits. That's about 90 feet by 9 feet. 90 feet is about 8 stories high. So imagine a building that's about 8 stories high 
it would be about the height of our church, Campion and some of the other church, about rough, maybe a 10 or 15 uh, feet plus or minus the size of our church. But that would be the height of that image. It was a gigantic image. And so what King Nebuchadnezzar did was he called all of the leaders, all the administrators, all the treasurers, all the governors, I want you to come to this certain place to give worship, to worship and bow down to this image. And so all of the group came, everyone from around town came and stood before this golden image. They were amazed. Wow, this is a tall, bright, gold image. And so the command was made by one herald, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, when you hear the music, I want you to fall down, bow down to this image, and worship. And you know what happened in verse 7? So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Everyone bowed down, except there was a problem. There was a group, three men, who did not bow down. Some of the Chaldeans, the magicians, the astrologers, they looked at the back and they said, ooh, you, you see what I see? I see that. Those three Hebrews are not bowing down. And so they ran to the king and they said, King, we have a problem. What's going on? What's, what's happening? We have a problem. These, everyone bowed down, but those three Hebrew boys, those three Hebrew boys, they're not bowing down. Are you serious? Yes, we are serious. And so Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar is very, he is furious. The Bible says in verse 13, and then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury, he gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the story. So they brought these men before the king. And look what he says in verse 14. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Look at verse 15. Please listen. Now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Now, I don't want you to miss these next three verses. Because remember, the first question we want to ask is, answer is, what is Christian integrity? Please listen, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. And the congregation said, Amen. Amen. If you want to know the definition of Christian integrity, it's found in one verse, verse 18, which says, But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. So that's Christian integrity. Christian integrity is, I will worship God alone, I will worship God only. And the congregation said? Yeah. I was trying to think of a text that would kind of help clarify and define this idea of Christian integrity. And I found it in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, when Peter, they were put in prison preaching Christ. And you know what they said? They said, you better stop preaching Christ. And Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than God. That's that is Christian integrity. Christian integrity is being in tune with God. Let me illustrate to you what Christian integrity is not. Now I do this sometimes with my family we're in the car. We will sing a song all in a different key. Have you ever tried doing that? It's, it sounds very, it's horrible. So this is what we're going to do. On the count of three.
free, I just want everyone in the congregation, the choir and the congregation, to sing the note, the first note that comes to your mind. Now let's see how beautiful this sounds, okay? So just the first note that comes to your mind, and let's hear the harmony. Ready? One, two, and we'll say la. We'll sing la, okay? One, two, three. La. Please stop, 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 stop. Yes or no? Did that sound beautiful? Capital N, capital O. That is, that is what Christian integrity is not. Disharmony. But do you not want to know what Christian integrity is? Christian integrity is being in tune with God. And so I made up a, a quick song and I'd like to teach it to you because I want to drive this point home. And the song is simply, Lord, help me be in tune with God. It kind of goes like this. Lord, help me be in tune with God. That's a little bit too high for some of the bases. I'll lower the key. Lord, help me be in tune with God. In fact, try to sing that with me. Ready? One, two, three. Lord, help me be in tune with God. Beautiful. Did that sound beautiful? That is Christian integrity. Now, I'm going to sing it again. Those of you who could harmonize, add the harmony. And let's see how beautiful this sounds. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Lord, help me be in tune with God. That's Christian integrity. Lord, help me be in tune with God. There it is. What's Christian integrity? Lord, help me be in tune with God. So we have one more question. What happens when we live with Christian integrity? Two results. Result number one. Jesus will help you. You know the story? These men don't bow down. So King Nebuchadnezzar says, turn that fire up by seven times. The fire was so hot that when the men brought these three Hebrew boys, these three Hebrew men, it ended up killing them because it was so hot. And what's amazing about this story is that in Daniel chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 24 that King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look at verse 25, please listen. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. When you are in the fire and the fires of temptation will rage in your life, Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. Now there were times in my life where I dealt with temptation. I made up in my mind, Lord, help me be in tune with God. I sang that tune in my mind. Not the exact tune, but I live by that phrase. And so my friends would say, hey, let's go hang out and let's go uh, watch this really bad movie. But I already made up in my mind I'm going to keep my, I'm going to be in tune with God. Come on, come to this party. I already made up in my mind, I'm going to be in tune with God. You know how strange it feels sometimes? Because your, your friends go and hang out, and you're the only one standing. You're the only one, and you're thinking to yourself, is there anyone, I mean, do I have any friends, anyone with me? Have you ever felt that way before? I heard a story of one person, Group of people, hey, come on, let's, let's, let's drink together. But this individual said, no, I'm not. Do you know how strange it feels to be the only one standing and to know that all your friends are having fun when you're not? I want to tell you that in every instance where you've said, Lord, even though I'm alone, I am with you, I want to let you know that you are not alone in the fire. Hallelujah. That there is someone else who is by your side and who is helping you. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The same Son of God that was there for, these, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is still the same God that is with you in the fires of temptation. Can you say amen? amen. Let's sing it. Lord, help me be in tune with God. Lord, help me be in tune with God. But not only will Jesus help you, last but not least,
believes, God will also use you to help others believe in God. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't believe in the God of Israel. But do you know what he prayed and what he said in verse 28 after he saw this incident? The Bible says in verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and the Who is he blessing? This pagan king is blessing the God of Israel. Can you say amen? This unbeliever is praising God. Why? Because of the faithfulness of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Last story, and then we are going to continue hearing this beautiful music. Some have heard this before, but it's worth sharing here. One winter, when Roman, Roman Emperor Licinius was persecuting the Christians, his thundering legion was stationed at Sebastian. And because 40 men in that company had declared themselves believers in Jesus Christ, they were sentenced to spend the night naked on a frozen pool. And so this large fire was kindled in a house nearby, and food and a warm bath were prepared for any who would renounce their faith. And as the daylight faded, these 40 warriors continued to resist in spite of the bitter cold, some were walking to and fro on this frozen pool. Some were already sleeping the sleep which ends in death. And some of these faithful 40 warriors were praying this prayer. And the company heard it. Oh Lord, 40 wrestlers have come forth to fight for thee. Grant that 40 wrestlers may gain the victory. Pray the same prayer, O oh Lord. Forty wrestlers have come forth to fight for thee. Grant that forty wrestlers may gain the victory. Finally, one of them could endure the suffering no longer, and so he left the others and his men. He left his, he left the others and went into the house where Sempronius and his men were on guard. But still, the petition, the petition went up. 39 left, but they still prayed, O oh Lord, 40 wrestlers have come forth to fight for thee. Grant that 40 wrestlers may gain the victory. O oh Lord. They prayed again, Lord, 40 wrestlers have come forth to fight for thee. Grant that 40 wrestlers may gain the victory. Their prayer was answered. Sempronius the centurion was touched by his comrade's bravery, and the Holy Spirit moved upon his heart declaring himself a Christian right then and there. He went to the frozen pond and he took the place of the one defector. And when the long night was over, 40 glorious men, Sempronius among them, went to sleep ready to wake up when Jesus returned. You see, when you and I decide to say, Lord, I'm going to be a man and a woman, a boy or a girl of Christian integrity, not only will Jesus help us, God will also help us to help other people believe in Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. When you choose to be in tune with God, you will help others be in tune with God. Don't forget this. Let's sing it one more time. Lord, help me be in tune with God. Ready? Lord, help me be in tune with God. Let's hear it with harmony. Ready? One, two, three. Lord, help me be in tune with God. How many here want to say, Lord, is that your desire? Would you raise your hand? Lord, help me be in tune with God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Oh, God. Thank you for the story of these three Hebrew, Hebrew boys. He, three, these three Hebrew men who were in tune with you. And Lord, we too 
want to be in tune with you. We're raising our hands here in this gym. Because, Lord, that's our prayer. Lord, help us be in tune with you. And so, Lord, bless us the rest of this morning as we listen to this music. And, Father, help us, Lord, to truly be men and women of integrity. In the name of Jesus Christ, let all of God's people say, Continue to be blessed as we hear this beautiful music.
Who knew you could use a trash can to praise the Lord? Amen. Praise God. Let's bow our prayer. Dear Holy Father, Lord, I thank you so, so much for the opportunity to be here in your Holy Sabbath and uh, with all these lovely people and kids, students from all over our conference to praise your name and to recommit our lives to being uh, fully in tune with you. Thank you for all the music that was uh, uh, played and, and the lovely tunes that we heard and, and sung. And I just pray that you would uh, give us a blessing on this Sabbath. Uh, take care of us as we're going home. And uh, uh, bring us back here safely uh, this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.